Hello there! Let's see. How's my audio? Not sure if the game sounds in there. Anyway, hello there and welcome to Plug It Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plug It Along, we were working with the Festival Buddy plugin because it was the anniversary festival, and we showed how to incorporate uh, French and German strings uh, when, now that we had them. Uh, but then we had some problems testing it. So today we're going to investigate why we were having problems. Uh, but since the festival is over, we're going to use our debug capabilities to pretend like we're still in the festival. And if Festival Buddy doesn't have those yet, we're going to make them. As always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. And in the meantime, let me, uh, let me see if my game audio is coming through. Cool. Yes, it is. It's just... OBS thinks it's kind of quiet. Okay. Um, awesome. So, let me go ahead and pull up the desktop view here. Uh, what are we looking at? Let's come in into our plugin manager, uh, do a reload since I've changed them, and we're looking at Festival Buddy. Festival Buddy is a plugin that has. Sorry, just had a mental note I was making for myself. Festival Buddy has uh, various festivals throughout the year incorporated into it with the idea of being helpful. Uh, so, for instance, the fireworks in Bree quest that we were working on last time, you can get yourself a, uh, a little frame here where you can move around and put it over your actual quits, quick slot bar. And then we can go ahead and say, hey, fireworks in Bree, we want a red. And then we should see a border around the red one. Or we don't want a red, and you should see a border around the not red ones. Last time we were working on getting the French and German variations of how about something besides red, launch it now, that you might see in the game. And so what we'd like to do is go ahead and make sure that this uh, can respond to the client language. So it'll try doing uh, French or German. Uh, and we can also give ourselves the ability to fake out what language we're running in so that um, we don't have to you know, log into the client with a, uh, with a different language chosen. We can just say, no, we're in French, it's fine. So all of these are nice little ways that we're going to have to speed up the development process by kind of doing shortcuts, uh, uh, giving ourselves a debug capability to pretend like game state is happening when it's really not. So, where are we? Let's go ahead and pull up. Uh, this is Visual Studio Code that I'm using as an editor today. Using the Lotro API and Lua uh, extensions to add IntelliSense for both Lua and the Lotro specific API. Um, I did some investigative changes after the last stream to try to figure out why language didn't seem to be working. So, what we want to do is not deal with all of those. Uh, first thing, let's go ahead and save off our to-do file changes. Um, but then we want to look and see what else is happening here. Uh, and a lot of this was investigation. So, cool, cool. Yeah, all that's investigation. I'm just going to dump it. So, discard it. And when you do a discard in a, a UI around a, a repository like this, what you're saying is throw away all the changes since the last time I saved my changes, or um, last time I did a commit, a snapshot of my changes. Uh, and so this is destructive. As it says, you can't undo this action. There are intermediate steps. You could stash this change away if you wanted to refer to it later. But in this case, I've just gone you know, mentally over it and looked at these things and said, no, I'm fine, throw it away. It's as if it never happened. And if I had decided a millisecond later, um, as some would call the Ono second, um, too, too late. It's gone. Okay. So, um, cool. Um, this is interesting. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this into our to do file. Consider using a starts with function instead of a pattern to find the announcer. 
I'm gonna, just going to paste in what that would look like and retabify it. Okay. But that being done, um, let's save a note. Git client language is not returning what we expect. Question mark. Uh, and then gone. Okay. Um, Let me save this little note to myself. And that's gone as well. Main window. Um, I don't remember why I was. Oh, that was on the escape button, right. Because what was happening is if you pressed the escape button, it was hiding this fireworks UI. But there was no way to restore the fireworks UI. Uh, and also, uh, escape didn't get rid of the thing that it was on top of. And so that seemed wrong. Hmm. Edromir asked, where is the country on the screen, please? Well, if you're asking where I am in game, that is Glen Helig. That's one of the uh, Hobbit residences in Swanfleet. Uh, Swanfleet, and just down here in, is my mouse cursor visible? Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, just in the, in the bottom middle, let me, uh, let me see if I can't uh, make, that says capture cursor. I'm gonna turn that off, turn that back on. Okay, well, my apologies. For some reason, it doesn't seem to be capturing the cursor. Um, but yes, in the bottom middle of Swanfleet, you can see Glen Helig. It's one of my favorite locations in the new Swanfleet and Cardalon areas. I, I just adore it to bits. And so I've been really enjoying streaming from here. Uh, and I'll probably keep doing that until they release the uh, Writers of Rohan expansion here on the Treebeard server in goodness about three weeks in a day. Uh, so not a lot of time to finish up this um, Rise of Isengard content that we've got here. Uh, but yeah, this is um, was released in November as part of the Before the Shadow expansion, which included both Swanfleet and Cardalon and a new level 1 to 30 experience um, for uh, starting a new character. But these particular hobbits, though they may have many normal hobbitish fears, have no fear of heights. Uh, it's a very topographically complex uh, little village. Um, and there's a fantastic mission that, uh, in here that I just played the other day. Uh, when you first get in, the objective is to deliver 60, I want to say pies, to the various residents across this um, very three-dimensional space. Um, so I encourage you to give that one a try. <laughs> okay, so great question. Uh, hopefully that was the answer that you were looking for. It's just across the river from one of the main places, uh, Clager and Mossward. Mossward is where you will start um, at the beginning of your Before the Shadow experience if you make a character go through that introduction. Uh, so th this is probably, I would guess, level you know 10-ish content when you first get here, but I I've only run here through here with an overleveled character, so I don't really have that in my head. And since all the quests are done, I can't even go and ask someone, hey, what level are you? You're just a professional. Oh, well. Um, okay. Cool. Great question. Thank you. All right. Um, so I think this is a really interesting one. <laughs> I got this says, Glen Helig is near the waterfall colloquially known as the Eater of Undying Deeds. Fantastic. Um, is it because people fall down or is it because the waterfall itself kills them uh, is what I'm curious about. You know, this is Treebeard and at level, oh, I want to say 17 or 18 or so, I did fall in the old forest to the spiders. We got overwhelmed. It was on deadly and uh, we were a little too aggressive. And part of me... A very small part of me regrets not just just plowing through, re redoing the character, and getting back there. Okay, Agartha says its train is deceptive and it's easy to fall to your death. Yeah, I, I could totally see that. Uh, I gotta say, if if you see a vi uh, you know vista like this, maybe uh, maybe be extra cautious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's 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 just gorgeous. And I, I love watching the sunset and rise here, so we'll get to see that through the. Uh, uh, course of this stream probably. Nope, it's morning, so we might get to sunset. 
the full uh, um, 24 hour in game cycle takes about 3 hours and 6 minutes for some reason uh, against a real world clock and so if it's morning now in 3 hours it will be morning again so we'll hit sunset but probably not sunrise we'll see Okay, so uh, the fireworks frame should not hide when you press escape because the underlying shortcut bar doesn't. Okay, we're going to go ahead and commit that. We're just not going to be hiding that bar at that point. Um, for F12, it still hides, just not escape. Okay, love it. Let's go ahead and commit that, uh, save that off. Mmm, that's some maze map stuff that I hadn't gotten to. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, um, let's go ahead and take these German and French fireworks announcements. And the rest of this we'll uh, hold on to for a second. All right, so added German and French fireworks announcements. Great. Now the maze map window, uh, let's, let's pop that open into a, maybe a little bit better of a comparison tool to see what's going on. Uh, naive comparison tools can really struggle when you do something that indents a block of code because it has a different amount of white space and so therefore the line has changed. And so you can get some very, um, uh, you can get diffs where it's like, this has been deleted and this has been added. Whereas the reality is the middle three lines, if we turn off minor differences, just white space, extra spaces, whatever, we can see those middle three lines haven't actually changed at all. This would be better highlighted as the addition of two lines, one before this block and one after it. Um, and in fact, The one that was actually added would be better highlighted as this uh, as this one. Uh, this one was there, so we could actually. Nope, I didn't want to do that. There we go. So this would be better highlighted as we added the starting if line and we added the end line, and the only thing that changed here was we indented it. But to a naive text comparison, all of uh, these lines were changed. These lines were added. And so it just looks like you deleted this and you added this, even though these middle three lines are conceptually the same thing. And so it's helpful if you have a file comparison utility that can take the severity of the change into account. And in this case, that's a minor change. It's white space only. You can also edit um, to say, I don't care about other things. Like if I just don't care about the word end, you could come into the rules and say, let's go ahead and add another unimportant text uh, and we'll just say end is unimportant, and then poof, hey, <laughs> you you didn't you didn't add it. We don't care about it. Obviously, we do care about it, so I'm going to remove that rule. Uh, but having a file comparison utility where you can just say, I know it's different, but I actually don't care about that. Uh, and a lot of times that comes in very handy if you're looking at like two XML files and a, and you know a tag was uh, an attribute was added and you don't care about that attribute. You just say, you know. Assume, assume it's fine, I don't care, uh, and then you can do uh, more rational comparisons between two large complex data sets that, um, where there's new things that you don't care about, so you just don't, want, don't care, or things that you don't care about have changed, and it's like, okay, let's focus on what we do care about. All that being said, this is fine. We're, we're just checking for the existence of a thing before we uh, try to uh, look at its element. Now, ideally, yeah, interesting. Um, this was probably not the right place to write that. Let's let's pull that up. Um, it's not on topic for today at all, but it'll be fine. This is line uh, 109. And we can see we had if that, then if this other thing. Um, we should just combine those. And if that exists and this exists, then. And this is actually going to be really nice because this allows us to undo that indent, which means the comparison just got so much simpler, right? And it's like, hey, your if statement now is a compound if statement. Okay, done. Uh, the rest of it, there were no meaningful changes. 
love it. Um, now, whether or not we should ever be in the position where that could be known, maybe we're, we're obscuring that uh, in favor of a quick fix. But quick fix it will be because I don't remember what the problem was. So, check for this before using it. Cool. Done. Now, the other thing in Maze Map Win, uh, which is outstanding, is it looks like I was adding some strings to deal with some server names. And uh, what was happening is when you're on the Laurelin server, you get not only server, but you get, uh, you know, Laurelin Laurel server, but you get uh, uh, bracket en rp bracket space uh, Laurelin server. And that's something we need to take into account. Now you could try to dot star your way out of that uh, if your pattern will work with that, but in the meantime it's made sense to just go ahead and add those strings in. So those could maybe be further collapsed as simplified into some patterns, uh, but in the meantime we'll, I'll go ahead and throw those in. What I would really love, and there probably is and I just haven't used it, is a central library that takes the logic that's implemented in so many uh, plugins like Reminders, like Waypoint, like um, uh, follow map and, and roaming threats uh, plugin, and just say this is the library for you know decoding your uh, slash loc output. And then when those cases when SSD does an update, you just update that library, and then everything else just works. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and save that off. Add some additional strings for slash loc parsing. Done. I don't actually know that they work, but I know I put them in there for a reason. So uh, we'll revisit that the next time we're playing around with the idea of a map feature. OK. More to-do file changes. To-do file changes. Again, if uh, I've mentioned this before, but if I was being a little bit more robust about this, I would probably use something like GitHub's uh, issues uh, feature, where I could track those outside of a text file that's in the same repository. Uh, but right now, a text file is about the level that I'm working at for these plugins. So just be aware that you, you could do better than me. You could, you could improve on that. OK, our options window is there, and we've got some strings here. Now what's going on with the strings is I'm actually going to stash those uh, so we can talk about why I made some changes here. So I'm going to go ahead and stash one file. And um, one way of resolving missing French slash German strings. OK, we're going to save that. And that gives us a clean working repository. We can see I've got six unpushed uh, changes here. We can also see it still has the midsummer uh, label. So let's go ahead and do something about that. So we're going to go ahead and repository git, finish the feature midsummer. Let's do it. It does contain changes. Whoops. We're just going to stash that calling it debug, we're going to reapply it in just a moment. So um, finishing features uh, is uh, features are a way of organizing your work in something like Git, uh, the repository uh, in Git. And so you can be working in multiple features at a time and kind of switch back and forth between them uh, without having to have everything happening all at once, which is inconvenient uh, when that happens. So uh, we've gone ahead and finished that, actually. Let's go ahead and start a new branch while we're at it. Start feature language uh, support. Language fixes. OK. I'm going to go ahead and push that out while I'm thinking about it. OK, so our source control repository is all set up for us to figure out why our languages didn't work. Uh, and when I started looking into this, the strings in the strings in Festival Buddy are in two different places. They're in strings and they're in quest strings, which is a way of breaking it out. It's fine. Um, when you're doing this, think about 
uh, leading with the same theme. So in this case, if they had done strings quest instead of quest strings, then strings quest and strings would collate together. They would sort together. They would be right next to each other in this list. Now, strings quest might come before strings dot lua because Q comes before a uh, period. Um, you could you could uh, have strings general and strings quest as an organizational uh, feature. You could even have a, a subdirectory called strings in which these and other files reside. Uh, but by calling it strings and quest strings, uh, we, we, we've separated them out so that you don't necessarily realize the one is there uh, without paying attention. Now, before I added a readme file, um, quest strings and strings happened to be next to each other, but as soon as you start adding some stuff that starts with R, those get further and further apart. And if you start them with that same prefix, strings quest, strings general, strings deeds, whatever, uh, strings chat, then they'll stay together no, almost no matter what you do. The only way to separate things out is to add a different strings, and they're still co-located. So we have our strings.lua, and how does this work? The way strings.lua works is uh, there are uh, numerous tables. They all start in lang, and then you have errors, you have festivals, you have others, and underneath that you have something else, festival spring, summer, harvest math, and within that you have some number of English, French, German, and even sometimes Russian is called out in here. Uh, the reality is uh, I think Russian is probably not a useful thing to call out anymore. Uh, there's no official Russian client, and my understanding is uh, in the unofficial one, the client language is reported as English, but those strings have just been overwritten with the Russian ones. I don't know for sure, haven't tried that, but that's what I've heard. In which case, calling out uh, the, the Russian one may not result in a useful functionality. But it's, it's nice to, if you have the Russian strings, why not throw them in there somehow? Uh, and then someone else can go through the process of uh, just calling them out as English. But anyway, so we have this table, uh, Lang Festival Spring, and within that is English, French, German, Russian, some combination of those. But we don't have a guarantee that the one you're looking for is there. And so all the code in Festival Buddy is saying, you know, look, look in Lang Festival's spring and then the current language and then use that. And there's no checking to be, hey, is that current language present? Uh, which is suboptimal. And so what I've used in other places, and I think could work here, is uh, in a lot of these cases is a function that says given uh, lang festival spring get the current languages string or if that is missing get the english one as a, as a fallback and then you never have to worry about or if, if that doesn't exist just return nothing because at that point we don't have a string uh, but at that point you have a central function that is in charge of doing the lookup and then you go, you have all of these uh, tables uh, I think that's a fine solution, especially if you don't have a lot of strings. The other one that I've done for DTracker, which does have a bunch of strings, is to just have different versions of the file, strings fr, strings e, strings en, and only load the one that matches your current language. But what you have to be careful with is then there's no helper func uh, uh, function, so all of your strings have to be there, even if, even if it's just the default English value. Uh, you you can't add it into the English one and forget to add it to the other ones, or that's just a runtime error and your plugin will stop working, or will not work very well. So when I look at this, I think the 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 best option is the the easier version, just the the git string one. But the question is whether there's a regular enough structure where we can do that. So if we have Lang Festival Spring, that is a table that contains English, French, and German. Great. But uh, Lang Other Fireworks Announcements, it does have English, uh, German, or French, but within those are a whole bunch of different uh, uh, strings. And so these would have to be treated differently. Uh, and so the question is kind of is, you know, how about how about the rest? And so here, Hubnetigan's announcements, Hubnetigan's quest begin text. This structure is wrong because English is on the outside. English needs to be on the inside for those. So um, for the fireworks announcement, it's no problem because we're just looking for does this key that we just found exist in this table? And so it can, it doesn't need that get string functionality. 
Um, but in a lot of the other places, uh, we're going to need to make some adjustments. And that's okay, because in many of these placements, I'm the one who did it wrong in the first place. Like this Farmer's Fair stuff I added in, I didn't do success and then English, German, French. I did English and then success failure. That was not good on my part. Um, it works fine uh, the way the plugin is set up now, but it won't uh, support that get string function. So let's let's take a look at what we think that would look like. Uh, and I wonder if it would make sense to borrow a get string function from the deed tracker plugin. It might. Let's come into documents, Lord of the Rings Online, plugins. Nope, uh, backed it up. Um, <laughs> Uh, plugins, cube plugins, deed tracker, uh, and we're looking for probably general functions. Might be a plugins function. The distinction between those is maddening sometimes. Da, da, da. Get string. Great. Um, let me pull that off and bring it over. Okay, so this is the get string function. So you pass it in the you know, I call it array, it should really be table, uh, and the language that you're looking for, whatever that uh, type of indexing is. Um, and uh, uh, Festival Buddy, that would be a string that says English or German or French or Russian. Um, get string allows you to pass the language in because it allows you to override whatever the current client language is. It's a little extra thing. So uh, the, the normal behavior of get string is to get the one that corresponds to your client language. But if you're like, no, I really would like the German one, please, you could override that with the language here. Otherwise, there is a global value language. Cool, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna use that. Um, if the thing that we're looking for is null, we're not gonna find a string, so just return a blank. Um, it looks like at some point language could have been uh, spelled out English instead of EN, so this was a, a little bug fix for that. And then if the language that we're looking for exists, or the language string that we're looking for exists, return that. Otherwise, if the English one exists, return that. Otherwise, just return the thing itself and hope it was a bare string that we called get language on. Uh, ideally, uh, we would look for the type of array. Uh, earlier and say, is this a string? Is this a table? Uh, if it's a if it's a string, just return it. If it's a table, then start working. So these are these are some thoughts in my head. So we're going to go ahead and pull that in to this strings file uh, function get string, and we're going to start uh, fixing it. So for one thing, um, this language right here. Uh, is not how they currently refer to language. Although maybe it should be. Um, <coughs> so, let's take a look. Currently they use settings.language. So we're going to use that, but it could be that we want to uh, change how that's stored because saving out the, the language in your settings file um, isn't a great idea unless you have some way for the user to change it. Otherwise, you should be reading it from the client state. Okay, um, what we want to do is um, do some checks on array. So if array is nil, then just return an empty string. We want to check the type of array and see, is it a string, is it a table? Uh, and how do we do that? I don't remember. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quick little check. Lua check type of variable. Awesome. Please tell me how to do this. <laughs> All right, so we can see the type. Type function gives you the type name of a variable, a value. Awesome. So I would hope we can say if type of array uh, oh, cool, and we can see the IntelliSense here returns the type of its only argument coded as a string. The possible results are nil, number, string, boolean, blah, etc. So if type of array, uh, and I don't like that name, uh, get string of, I would like to call it table if that's allowed. Okay, so get type of table equals a string, then return table. So, not a table. 
not uh, nothing to check. Okay, and then if type is of table is table, then we can start doing stuff. Now, if we get to the end here and uh, the type wasn't a table, uh, well, let's look at that function again, type. Uh, it can be nil number string boolean table function thread user data. Actually, I kind of think we want to reverse this check. If it's a table, then we want to do stuff. Otherwise, um, we'll just return it and hope, right? If it's a Boolean, if it's an integer, those things could be concatenated. Maybe not Boolean, but th those things can be put into a, a, a string, uh, a formatting, whatever. Um, okay, so table, 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 table. All right, so if it's nil, awesome. Uh, now, this might actually be unnecessary except that yeah I guess we I guess we want that because nil is one of the things that we're going to get uh, if it is nil and we would like to return a blank string there but let's assume a table so we get else if um, type of table equals nil then return blank and we'll yoink that and Okay, so that gets us, oops, a little bit smaller. Uh, that gets us maybe a little bit more sensible of a get string function. Assuming that the, uh, checking is the thing that we are looking at a table, good, we're gonna treat it like a table, uh, indexing it with our brackets. Uh, if it's not a table, uh, and it therefore it's one of these other things, uh, which is nil number string boolean table function thread user data, cool, if it's nil, and maybe it would be useful to check for functions, threads, or user data, but honestly, just code better, right? Like, don't call this thing with a function or you're going to be unhappy. Um, but if it's nil, we'll go ahead and sanitize it to a empty string, and otherwise, we'll just return whatever it is. And this is useful if you call get string on something that is actually a, st a string, you'll just get it right back. Uh, and it won't, won't be... Uh, it won't be an error to do it, it will, will just have been unnecessary. And this makes you a little bit proof if you uh, change how things are stored and accidentally, you know, and do the, the one file per language thing instead, then you just get function calls that weren't needed, not function calls that fail. Okay, so we have a get string function. It takes uh, what we hope is a table and the, the language we want to do. And if we don't get a language, which is sort of the default way of calling this, the default thing is going to be, you know, get string x and that's it. So the language is going to be uh, passed in as nil uh, by default. Uh, and when that happens, interesting. That indentation is wonky. Not a fan. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, so you get a null in a language, you get whatever the thing in that's currently in settings.language. Uh, don't need this particular sanitization. Uh, we are actually looking for the full word right now. Um, we can see English is spelled out. So uh, table English. Uh, if the table language is uh, present, go ahead and use it. Otherwise, if the table English is present, um, Otherwise, we should probably go ahead and return an empty string at this point. Okay, so that is our kind of updated get string function. Now, the downside of using a function like this is you kind of just want to make changes everywhere at that point. Uh, and we don't necessarily want to do that, but we do have that capability. Um, but at the very least, we want to make sure that we are getting these various um, uh, translations, tra assuming there are translations. And for that, we want to look at the, the get language function. 
All right, and we're, we're finding Git language functions in multiple uh, plugins here, uh, but we're interested in the Festival Buddy one. Okay, so we see two things. We say, see a Git client language, uh, and Git client language is returning an integer based off of um, what language we have which is an interesting way of doing it. But since we know our strings aren't being indexed by integer, um, they're in being indexed by string, that's a little weird and makes me think this function might not be getting called. So we have git language here getting called three times. In globals, we also have a git language being called and that sets client lang. So let's take a look at client lang here. Okay, so maze map win is looking at client lang. Um, settings.language is initially being set to client.lang, oh sorry, client lang. And let's make sure we only find the things of that. Otherwise, yeah, so we're setting client lang and it's getting set in uh, settings. And I think we need to kind of ask ourselves, why is it getting set in settings? Let's come on in and see what our um, plugin file, plugin save file looks like. So we're gonna come on in to Lord of the Rings Online, uh, plugin data, account, server, uh, and this is probably gonna be in the character. If we come look at all characters, well there is a care data, interesting. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna going to use a sublime text for my text editor. Uh, and I'm curious what's going on between the one in all characters. Oh, of course, of course, I know. So this is the settings per, the per character settings. Okay, uh, as we're looking through here, we're seeing integers. Uh, we're not seeing um, decimal uh, numbers, we're just seeing integers. And in the character data, we are seeing lots of integers. So this should be pretty resilient uh, to uh, language issues as you're saving this file. Um, decimal numbers are kind of the worst case scenario because there's some uh, there's some issues that you, you, uh, some, some workarounds you have to do to store them and load them successfully between uh, changing client languages. But it looks like what are these numbers for? I wonder. I think the festivals must have indexes to them, like festival number four, seven, whatever. Okay, cool. So we can see the language is sort of my uh, save file as English, but we can see there's, uh, or I have looked and there's no way to change that language. So, uh, and we can see also, we set it once and then we don't look at it. We always get client lang live. So I would say it is a mistake to save your language in settings. So I would actually want both to delete that and also in the place uh, that we load the, the settings, go ahead and null it out so that it's no longer stored in the save file. Since we're, we're never looking at it anyway, it was saved and never used. Um, now if we do a search for language, we are going to see it pop up a lot because, oops, um, everywhere that we're looking to get a string, we're calling language. And as we can see, it's a lot, but Festival Buddy isn't the only thing that we're finding here. So yes, we are finding a lot of things, but 
if we only look at Festival of Money, it's maybe a little bit more manageable. So every place we have one of these settings out language, this would be where we'd want to call it git string. Uh, so it can handle the language lookup. We have a central place for that. So let's go ahead and remove language from the default setting and find wherever we load that data. So load data, great, we have a settings equals that. So settings language equals nil. No, no longer saving. And I guess I should say, uh, yeah, language and save uh, and settings as a 1.4.5.2. So that's how we would clear that out. But everywhere in the program is still looking at settings out language. So that's where we need to start getting into this. Oops. So how do we make this switch? Well, this is going to be kind of two parts. Um, anywhere where we're using uh, this settings out language, what we really just want to do is say, hey, um, when I hover over you, because we're using Visual Studio Code, do I see that you are a table of English, French, German, and Russian? If so, I can just call get string. And I'm actually going to put that and uh, copy that into my uh, clipboard. And ideally, that's one less of them. Same thing for this one down here. If we hover over resets, we see English, French, German, Russian. Great. Then we're going to call get string on resets and get rid of the rest of this. And then that's going to concatenate the result of that get string with whatever it is in ascend. Awesome. So we can just keep doing that, right? Um, it's a little bit of a formulaic process, but it's one of those things that you really want to have a human driving it instead of trying to do it with some sort of regular expression because you do want to double check. You want to look through that uh, table reference and make sure it's set up the way we're expecting with English, French, German, uh, Russian keys. So we get the get string, we'll go ahead and get rid of it. And we just keep going. Okay, barter items, awesome. And it looks like we have another one? Can I dereference? Not easily. Let's delve into that. So in festivals, your selected festival is still going to have your English, French, German, and Russian. Now, we can see some of them are not translated. That happens. But we can go ahead then and say uh, get string on a selected one and get rid of that setting of language. All right. That leaves the barter one, and I'm going to start closing some of these other windows that we have open. Okay, awesome. We have a divider window set text v2 of settings dot language. Well, I'm not sure what v is. Let's see what divider one links us to. Okay, so this is a barter item thing. Oh, of course, this was an artificial entry I put in to help organize things because the Hobnatigans Festival, well, can't load that now. Uh, the Hobnatigans Festival uh, has so many barter items that I thought it would be helpful to do some organizations. So there's uh, divider one and divider two for um, probably for like di uh, H uh, sizes kind of thing. But what we uh, know, just knowing, is that v2 then is going to be um, set up correctly for us. OK, so we want to call <laughs> get string on that v2. Really, anywhere where we're in uh, indexing where the last thing is our language is probably safe to do this on. As long as they're not doing anything else beyond that, then this thing, well, it's got to be indexed the way we're, we're hoping it will be. So I can use that knowledge to kind of uh, speed this up. Now that I've seen a couple of these, I'm getting more comfortable uh, doing this. Awesome. Audience. Yields audience. Great. OK. 
Okay, and we keep going. But we can see uh, we're working through these files uh, within Festival Buddy. And outside of Festival Buddy, uh, we don't care. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink those down. I thought I had done that. Oh, I, then I had to do a research. Okay. Great. So instead of setting that language in that git string function, we're using client lang. That's going to be the correct one for us. And then let's in this example here. Yes, window title. Yeah, let's do a lang dot errors dot load just for the example, since that's one of the first things here. Uh, so our example now is going to guide someone. Uh, correctly. Okay. Both of those look good. So, nope. Now, if you're feeling like languages are a big part of your plugin, it might be worthwhile not to call it git string. Um, when we're doing localization stuff uh, using a C sharp framework, uh, that I, I use for some other projects, we end up just calling it like L, right? Like L uh, whatever um, for language, right? Or localization, uh, just because we're using it all the time and we just don't want to take up all the horizontal space. So depending on how much you want to call out that you're doing a git string versus you just want it to be a little bit more, um, uh, hit, uh, maybe not hidden, but just a little bit uh, more in the background. So instead of this git string, you just call L. Uh, and that would do the same thing effectively. Uh, so it's kind of up to you what you call this. Get string is just kind of an obvious we're getting a string. Uh, but if you're getting strings so often, it starts to get cumbersome. Uh, and so consider like if every other line is a get string call, do you really want to call it get string? Or do you want to have it get string, but you can also uh, call L if you want, and that'll pass it through, or vice versa. Um, yeah, give, give some thought. You don't have to call it git string. Git string is just a useful uh, way to uh, kind of conceptualize what we're doing because we're getting a string. All right, new quest. Great. Um, this is interesting. A Lang's quest from that one. Okay. Now we can see um, the farmer's fair here is not set up. Um, for other languages. And so if you were to load this in French or German and uh, execute this call, this call uh, would uh, attempt to index fat mare with you know a language that's not there, uh, French or German, and that would cause problems. You'd get a nil from that. And then uh, if you try to call it, if you try to do stuff with that, you'll probably end up poorly. But this get string function is going to sanitize that. It's going to just return the English one if there's not a better one to return. Okay, now here's where we can see some issues. Um, the language check is not the last thing, so we have a miss a done table. So if we look at all the places this is used, uh, it is, in fact, just these three places. Awesome. We're going to want to uh, invert this. We want to bring the inside out. So we want this to be success equals, and then that's going to be uh, going to have inside of English equals. And then you want the same thing. You want to bring a failure on out as well. I mean, ideally, you don't want failure, but sometimes it's going to happen. Uh, and so English is going to be this inner table. And then within that, um, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm declining these inner tables. But of course, we don't want inner tables. We just want those to be strings. So we just want to hoist this success string on up. Uh, and of course, we want to just hoist this failure string on up. Uh, and then 
a uh, further French or German or whatever strings would be defined. So now we have um, the language is the very last part of it. So you can pass uh, a series of tables into that get string function and it will do the, the process of looking in for the language. But that means we need to go ahead and first of all bring this out so instead of indexing that language second to last, we index it last. And then we can see success and failure are set up the way we need them to be. So we can go ahead and do the same thing where we call get string and chunk off that last part, and just delete it. Great. Public service announcement, the legendary, um, legendary item reward track season five closes in around what 18 hours 19 hours 24 minutes so if you have unclaimed boxes as i have one here do remember to claim them before that time hits zero uh and remember that the servers will probably go down for maintenance tomorrow so you'll lose uh, three or four hours there and it'll probably be too late when they come up so do claim those if you have them outstanding it would be a shame to see them vaporized uh which is i think what happens to them if you don't claim them I'm looking forward to the day where there is a claim all button, which first checks if there's enough room in your inventory and then claims everything that's available. But until then, uh, I had 98 or so boxes to clean this morning and, and just you know clicked a bunch and then it was there. Of course, I didn't have room for them, so now my shared storage is full. Uh, my poor Schildvox shared storage looks like a mess. Uh, but, you know... Um, Eventually, I'll, I'll deal with that. Maybe uh, maybe tonight I'll build burglar tools or something. All right, so we have those two as git string. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing, git string, because this fireworks announcer has English, French, German, Russian. Awesome. Okay, we've got a language and then a C message. If that's not good, that's a sign that we need to fix that. Oh no, it is not. We are attempting to find, we have some chat text and we're checking to see if it exists. I think in that sense, we just want to do client lang and let it do its own thing. We don't need to uh, do anything more with that. Okay, fireworks announcements. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I think that's, again, a whole bunch of other things. And so we're going to do a client lang and let it do its own lookup. All right, we'll what fit announcements. Same thing. We're going to use uh, client lang. Are we? <sighs> I don't have a good way to deal with that right now. So yes, we are. But any place where we're directly using client lang instead of a helper function makes me a little nervous. That's okay. Dance. Um, we have V in dance strings. Let's take a look and see how dance strings are set up. We have dances. Each one of these dances uh, is set up correctly. So dance strings, uh, we're looking for V. Uh, and so yes, we can safely call get string on V like that. Okay. Emote target, set up correctly. And another emote target. Uh, 
Now I'm seeing an unused local. What's going on with alert? Interesting. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that later uh, at some later time. Fessel Buddy has a really interesting uh, singleton for uh, alert messages, and I'm not a fan of singletons uh, because what if you want to alert more than one time, uh, for instance, but it's a lot of work to change on a whim. Okay, so we're looking at debuffs. The US comes from debuffs selected, okay, and within each of those we do have tables set up. So our V settings language, we can go ahead and do strings. And again, if your final index is a, a language, then you could pass it to get string and it's fine. Uh, it'll, it'll do fine duck typing in that case. It doesn't really matter as long as we're able to index by that language. My friend's gone offline. Okay, quest, festival, quest key, settings. Again, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do know that the last thing it's doing is language, so the function we call will be fine. What on earth is a CD table? The table of cooldowns. Cooldown table, nice. What's table? Check festival data, all right. Um, well, same thing. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I called the function get string, but of course what we're seeing here is that we're not getting a string. We're getting, and I can't do what I'm doing. Uh, let's take a look at these uh, cooldowns that we'd be getting. These are in festivals. stuff works. But if it does work, okay, so we're making a table for cooldowns. What is E? Lying in festivals, okay. Oh, why did you use E and F? I don't understand. Okay. Um, so we're checking that language. So get string. Oh, that doesn't work because get string is going to sanitize it. So this is a case where we need to go ahead and use um, client lang in both of these places because we don't. If it is nil, we need to know that it's nil, and if it is nil, we need to go ahead and have a writable. Uh, memory, and I'm not convinced that the string return from get string is writable. Yeah, let's go ahead and make sure we're searching for settings.language. Actually, setting this quote language would also be useful. And we're only using it here, great. Settings dot language. All right. We can see the Hobnetigans teams are not set up correctly. 
and this is another case where we need to go ahead and do some conversion. Uh, this might be easier since there's four of them to go ahead and do a multi-selection edit. So we'll go ahead and paste these lines in and all we're really trying to do is um, back them out one uh, and we're trying to take the text uh, out of there because we need that to be a table and inside that table we need to say English uh, equals and then we can paste that back in. Alright, I was trying to figure out what's going on here and let's go ahead and say convert team name to lookup value, uh, key um, in fact I don't like the comment being out there let's go ahead and place it here uh, and this is convert lookup key to team name awesome so we can go ahead and pull this back in and now we're indexing by the thing instead and the final one is our uh, language awesome let's go ahead and find all the uses of this though because this is going to be a place that's going to be fragile so let's come on in we can see settings language is going to be here. Awesome. And that lets us call git string. All right. Uh, same thing. Coming on down here. Um, we want to go ahead and get rid of that language. Still beaks. Awesome. And then straight to uh, git string. All right, same thing here. We're gonna yank that to the end, yank this to the end, then come take a look. Great, get string and steel beaks. Great. I guess the next time Hobnetikins comes up, I need to spend some time on the field uh, in German and French. All right, what's going on with setback color? And why are we setting a nil? And why is it not like it? Well, I can't remember, but it must work. Okay, and we have one more. Where we have type nonagains, then team, and then that. Awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and call it git string, lop off that language, and be happy. Okay. So that was all the places that use this. And there were only five of them, that's not too bad. Uh, so we can go ahead back to settings language. All right, Hobnetigan's text. We can see the same thing here. Hobnetigan's text, um, each of these needed to be its own thing. And you can see why I did this, right? I just said I have a bunch of English ones uh, and they're gonna be in here. Instead of field, English equals this. None, English equals this. Need quest, English equals this, and whatnot. But it just doesn't work um, with the git string, with the simplified git string function. You could definitely have a, you know, if this works, then go ahead and step down one more level into this key kind of thing, but it's just, it's not where, it's not what we have, and it's a little bit more complicated to maintain, which means it's probably not a good idea. Okay, um, but that being said, there's five of these or so, so it's gonna be easier just to do it as a multi-edit. So bring it on in, and same thing, we're gonna go ahead and back each of these out, get rid of that English wrapper, uh, and go ahead and start doing our edit. So we just wanna start here. Uh, and we wanna just grab this text that it's gonna be. And in its place, we're gonna go ahead and have a table, and then in here, we're gonna have our English, and then here, we're gonna have our string. So our, the, doing a multi-edit like this means that you're not really working very hard 
uh, not doing a whole bunch of copy paste to get the effect of it. And here, we want to do the same thing. Any place that was using that hub against text, we want to pay special attention. Okay, so um, need quest, great, and set up to English, get string. Okay, uh, next one, we have to have none against text here. Uh, and I'm just going to, uh, for each of these, uh, move the settings language. And in Visual Studio Code, in a lot of places, you can just click and drag a selected text to move it. Uh, and sometimes that's just easier than Control X, Control V. Okay, so field, yeah, the, none, yeah, more field, oh, great. So we can go ahead and do um, a, a git string on both of those. And we'll go ahead and close up that with its parentheses. Great. Um, that is most of them. Anything else? Okay, let other have nice text. Okay, awesome. We need to move that to the end. Whatever text type is. Field game of need quest done waiting. Okay, no problem. Um, but that means we're git stringable. Okay, great. So it's the specific places that we're using Hobnetigan's text have been updated. And we're ready to come on back. So uh, we're back, uh, we have another one, Hobnet against announcements, where we have that interstitial language. Uh, so we're gonna wanna do this same conversion. And again, don't do a whole bunch of effort, just bring it over into, into its own buffer so that you know you're not going to be uh, changing anything you don't mean to. And then all of it, we're gonna go ahead and outdent it once. And any of these places, uh, that have space equals space quote, great. We're gonna go ahead and get that selection. Instead, we're gonna have a table, and in that table, we're gonna go ahead and English equals, paste that, and don't forget your semicolons at the end of the table entry. Uh, and our transformation is done. And it's so, so much fewer keystrokes and so much less likely to go wrong once you get comfortable with that multi-edit. You can just do your transformations and be comfortable that they're all pretty good. Okay, but that being said, let's pay special attention to Hobnetigan's announcements, <laughs> um, at least the first one or two. So we're gonna go ahead and bring language to the end here and look at the Hobnetigan's quest begin and it's not it's unknown, that's not good. Let's go take a look. Haha, -ha, I left it in its English tab. That's not gonna work. So, we need to uh, delete that and out into this. Okay, so now we have our, Eng oh, that's great. This is why we double check things, otherwise uh, we'll just get crashes. Or things not working right. All right, so that was the first one. Let's go ahead and come down to this next one. Uh, and same thing, uh, now that we're pretty happy with the state of it, bring that over, have done this quest end, good, we have English, and go ahead and do a git string. Done. Git string, and I'm just gonna delete that, and end parentheses. Get string, delete this, uh, the language part, and end string. Close parentheses, I should say. Now this is a place where a multi-edit could probably do the trick. I know exactly what I'm looking for, but there's so much text in between each of them that I'd be a little bit concerned about accidentally changing something that I didn't mean to. Um, and we are gonna check things in source control to make sure we didn't miss anything, but it's one of those cases where you have to balance the effort of doing a multi-slide versus how many of these are you doing? In this case, we were doing eight of them, maybe seven. And so the effort of doing this part felt commensurate with uh, doing a multi-edit to do the same thing. 
uh, given the extra effort of, oh, I can't isolate it to just these specific lines. I have to pay more attention. So at each point where there's a possible multi-edit, you just get to decide, is this worth it? And when you have just the lines that you want to convert, as we had, just a block of them that you can easily isolate, take into another buffer and uh, be isolated the entire time you're working, it's a lot easier to say yes to that. Okay, um, so all of these have been looked at, so we're going to go back to our settings.language. Awesome, I think we're done with the hobnetigans. Okay, so our settings account, we can see, has English, so we're going to do a git string and be done with it. Same thing, settings load error? No. What is settings load error? Fantastic. Well, we try to call it, but it doesn't exist. Let's see what it was trying to be uh, by going into strings. Let's see if we can find load. All right, errors load, settings. Um, so lang errors uh, dot load dot settings. Now I might have been the source of that error, I suppose. So, um, oh, that doesn't have any language to it. Well, let's fix that. I suppose. All right, so that was loading saved character data. Errors load settings account. Okay, this was server. This is account, okay? So lang dot uh, error load dot settings account. And now that we have this, we can go ahead and get string and get rid of that settings that language. As you can see, there's just enough irregularities and edge cases where it's the kind of thing where you can kind of zone out when you're doing it, watch a, watch a YouTube video, watch Netflix, what, do whatever in the background, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta be paying a little bit of attention just in case. But we only got two files left, that's awesome. The main window has the most of them, I wanna go to the options window instead. Uh, we can see map options, great, let's get rid of it. Uh, we've got our set text map auto open. Great. Orientation. Directions. Tell me more about this. Oh. I think we'll let it be the client lang because it's being a it's populating a drop down but it would be useful index okay okay that's fine ish new quest okay get string uh, completed quest all right, get a string, and failed quest. All 
Okay. Set class class ID. All right, where does classes come from? Classes, um, there's indices there. Where does class ID come from? Who calls set class anyway? Okay, so we call set class uh, with armory, okay. Are there nine classes? Did that go up with the uh, brawlers, or is that the right number? I know. Uh, fellow, what do we have? Bjorning, Brawler, Burglar, Hunter, Champion, TBD, well, Guardian, Lower Master, Minstrel, Captain, Runkeeper, Warden. It feels like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Feels like we got 11 classes plus one coming in. Mm -hmm. Oh, Festival Buddy, why are you. Uh, why is Hidbolt such a long time ago? Okay, so. Classes. What are we missing? So I'm just going to do a quick little uh, screenshot. Got to spell it correctly, or you can't launch MS Paint. And then I got down to Lore Master, so I'm just jumping great. I'm being very lazy and not like going to the wiki or something. But I figure the end games will find the uh, arbiter on what's valid. Okay, so what do we have? We have we don't have a Bjorning. <laughs> don't have a brawler. Burglar. Why is it out of order? Captain, yep, champion. Guardian. Oh interesting. Why is the game drop down not in alphabetical order? Hunter, I feel like I should report that lore master should be a spelled with a hyphen. Lowercase n minstrel. Runkeeper warden. Guess I wasn't doing it the right way. Um, yeah, so our Bjorn is missing, of course, our Bjorn brother is missing. I'm curious if Bjorn and Brawlers have sets in Hitbolt. I assume they do. Seems like the kind of thing that they would uh, pay attention to. Guardian, Lord Master, Minstrel, Captain, Runekeeper, and Warden. Okay. Cool. Uh, also, Lord Master and Runekeeper are not spelled correctly, but that's okay uh, in, in the uh, Festival Buddy plugin. Oh, that's in Hitbolt. Why am I looking at that? All right. Uh, always interesting to see what's going on there. All right. We can safely ignore Hitbolt. Well, actually, we can't because it's about to happen on this server. Okay. So, um, iPairs for Lang Festivals. We've already taken a look at that and we're comfortable uh, again calling git string. On anything where the final uh, differentiator is the language. Okay, dance, awesome. We can actually see the uh, the various strings there. Barter. Now, for any string that is fully defined in all of the languages, this is a bit of an overkill thing, right? We're calling a function that's doing some checks to eventually give you the string that you were just getting anyway. Uh, but setting up a window like this is a one-time event, and we're adding maybe a, you know a few extra cycles to setting it up. But we're at also making sure that this doesn't just crash the function that gets called because for some reason what you're calling isn't there, uh, and so it allows you to make use of strings regardless of their translation state and get something meaningful uh, if there isn't a translation. All right, any other command? Great. Okay. 
Let's take a look at the brief fireworks. Strings, fireworks, brief fireworks, string. Ah, oh, we're supposed to be in quest, of course. Okay, brief fireworks. Okay, we're good, as expected. One of the things I like about this is it also uh, shortens the amount of characters on a line that you need to express something. Uh, which allows you to see everything a little bit more easily. And even more so if you're using something like L for localization. <laughs> I missed it. Wizard in chat said multi edit madness. Absolutely. Uh, I I really think anyone who d does text manipulation a lot and text editing whatever, uh, it's it's such a, a valuable tool to have in your toolbox, and it feels so awkward the first couple of times you do it. Like oh no, am I am I messing everything up? So having a little safe uh, buffer to play around with uh, is and and just you know. Try it out, see what happens. It's a uh, very uh, powerful, uh, even for silly things like this. Like, was I saving hours? No, I was saving a few minutes. Um, but, you know, it was an easy few minutes to save. Like, copy them in, do the transforms, copy it out, and I type so much less. And, you know, my, my wrists are very important to me. I don't want to uh, exacerbate any uh, carpal tunnel tendencies. And so if you also would like your wrist to keep working a long time, yeah, use a little bit less. Do multi edits. <laughs> As it says, I need to get better at it. Haven't figured out the key combos quickly yet, but yes, it takes practice. Absolutely. Every time I do it, I'm just helping reinforce that muscle memory and that that feeling confident that I, I can use it to meaningfully solve a problem. Uh, and so then the next time that I'm doing something, even something like this, where I've already mentioned, it's probably not a good idea to do it, but in the back of my head, I'm like, well, what if I did do that? Like, I, I could know, using source control, whether it worked or not. And, you know, in that case, you would just be looking for every instance of settings.language, and the problem is, sometimes it doesn't make sense. And so that, that's, why we're, um, that's why we're paying attention to it. Now we could just do it and try to load the plugin and see what crashes, but you know, if we're going to spend the time doing something like that, I'd rather just uh, go ahead and be looking at it in the first place. In this case, all right. So get string v, awesome. Keep going. Uh, and again, I don't know for sure that this is what it is, but if we were indexing it with language, then it's safe to call get string on it. Um, probably. Again, depends how you're using it. Now, this is a case where I'm seeing get string called on the same variable uh, in rapid succession, and that always makes me feel like maybe I should be, um, you know, saving this off, <laughs> right? Um, like I could save the result of the get string once using the comparison and then use it in this assignment. Um, 
since there's only one time doing it, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, do I, do I really care? But it is, it is in my head. Like anytime you're calling the same function twice to get the exact same result on the, with the same parameter that you're passing in, it's like, why, why are you not saving the result of that? And the answer is, in this case, calling the function does not take a lot of calculation. Introducing a local variable is a bigger change, and I don't think I'll break anything, but the more changes you do, the more likely you are to break something. So it's, you know, you, you, get, you gotta pick your battles, and maybe at a later date I'll come back and do something about that. But right now, the main point is this transformation, and I'm already going to have to stare at it long and hard to convince myself that I haven't messed anything up. All right, refresh quest guide, awesome. Uh, and so any changes that are kind of beyond the scope of just use git string uh, wherever possible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just asking for this to be a, a harder process. So this is where I would put it down in the to-do file. If I really wanted to see it done, I would put it down in the to-do file and uh, try to take care of it later. Or uh, even just reevaluate whether I care about it later. Sometimes you write something down and then later you look at it and you're like, no, what was I thinking? That's, that's, that's a crazy idea. Don't do it. That's... Uh, that's not good. Okay, so we've seen that all of the calls to um, settings.language have been replaced. In a few places, they were replaced with the, the variable that's actually being used, the client lang, and in most places, they're being um, replaced in other ways. So now there is no more settings.language. Uh, um, and then the question is, if we call git, uh, sorry, if we search for git, call git language, and I gotta spell it right, um, we can see in Festival Buddy, there's two different sets of turbine.engine.git uh, language. We have the one that's actually being used. We can tell it'll, it'll execute because it's at the um, at the file level. So we set client line to English, and then if that is French, cool. Otherwise, if it's German, cool. Otherwise, if it's uh, Russian, then whatever. This function should return a number. It should be a st basically a static return. So again, calling it multiple times makes me feel like, why don't we save that off? Uh, but we're not really buying a lot, because ideally you call that and it just returns the number. In this case, uh, the, num the, the integer number 268435459 or 268435460, or 268435463. Um, now those are delightful uh, numbers if you look at the turbine.language.english number, which is two. Or the English uh, GB number, uh, oh no, the, that one's bigger. So all the rest of these are really huge, uh, and then two. But they start making more sense when you look at them in uh, hexadecimal or, or uh, Binary given. Okay, so there's a real question as to why bother indexing with English, French, German, or Russian the string when we could have been indexing with English, French, German, or Russian the integer. Uh, like, we, you can just say, like, English equals turbine dot language dot English, right? This is a legal thing to say. You can do that for each of them. English equals French equals German equals Russian equals. And then you can just use that as your client lang. And then all of these places that are indexed by um, by quote English, that could just be English, right? Like English. And then you're indexing by an integer instead of by a string. And in my head, um, keys that are integers are always easier to work with than keys that are strings. Like the, the comparison between them is um, stupid simple for a processor to, to compare. Like it's a, it's a one op, right? Just are these two numbers equal? Whereas for strings, not so much. But then I remember that they're in a, a table, and that table might very well be done by, by hash buckets, and calculating a hash on an integer is probably not quite the, the, the streamlined process, and then, so I don't really know. But whenever I can index with integers instead of strings, I think really hard about whether that's a, that's a better idea. And so I, I look at that, but of course that's a bigger change, right? Like, um, that is a 
bigger change, but at the same time, it's not, right? Like if you search for quote English quote and just replace it with not that, you know, not quotes, um, you know, you could very well just uh, declare this as English all capitals. And then any place you have quote English quote, you just get rid of the quotes, right? Just English, done. Uh, and, and same thing with French, German, Russian. So this would kind of be my temptation is don't, don't use the string English, just literally use the built-in number you're guaranteed for it to, to work until they remove one of the numbers like Russian and then it, then it all falls down. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and take a look at all the changes we've made and make sure we're happy with them and then maybe actually try loading the plugin, see if it works. It did not, awesome. Let's come on in to general functions and see what's going wrong. Okay, so general functions 31. There was already a get string function. That's fantastic. Well, that's that's not going to work very well. Okay, um, so get string string ID and lang ID is looking at strings. Um, however, we don't have a strings reasonable, and Is this doing anything that I would like to incorporate into a strings function? But you can see lang ID not essential. We'll take load of value if missing. Awesome. But again, there is no lang ID. This was a function clearly copy pasted from some other plugin, uh, but then just never used. This function checks for the string ID in the preference preferred language. If you can't find it, it'll search in the default language. If that still can be found, the string error is returned. Well, that's reasonable. I think I just did an empty string, but yeah. So what it looks like is this is a very flat strings definition. You just have a strings array and all of your entries are there. And that's, that's a very easy way to do things, but it does mean it's a little hard to organize things um, in a hierarchical manner. You can do it visually, uh, but the way these strings are high, uh, organized here, all of the errors are inside of a table called error. And um, the other option would be lang, and then you would just have error underscore load underscore settings, and another one called error underscore load underscore settings account, uh, and then just straight under those would be the the, the specific language uh, strings. And you can do that too. But this uh, this plugin was already doing a higher, hierarchical thing, you know, other barter, barter item sort. These were already like this. So this function would never have worked for this plugin, so we're going to delete it. And hey, it loads. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's take a look by typing slash festival, and we can see we're getting some stuff. Uh, but the, the real, real question is what happens when we change languages. Now, the long version of that is to log off, uh, exit out of the game, set up a new language and come back in. But the short version is in main, where we get client lang. I guess it's not in main. Uh, oh, okay. It's not in main? in globals, of course. Um, over here in globals, we can just say client lang equals French. Actually, we'll start with German. I have a slightly better chance of uh, reading German. Okay, so I am not seeing much in the way of translations. Let's look at French. 
Maybe uh, maybe German just didn't have a lot of translations. All right, so we do have Danza uh, for dance. Um, great, we're getting some uh, language strings. Uh, we can see all the anniversaries. So I'm guessing if we go to our strings, uh, we will see our Germans are maybe not so translated. That's that's what's it. Or there, there or there are no translations. Awesome. So we are definitely getting our translations in uh, pl plugin text, but the game is not localizing items because the game knows it's in the English client language. These item names would be localized as well if the client itself were uh, launched correctly. Okay. So, oh wow, we're already an hour and 40 minutes into this. We've made some really good progress. I'm going to try to not go too over today. So if you had any thoughts, comments, questions, things you wanted to talk about, um, before we start wrapping up the stream, now's a great time to start thinking about them, start typing them. Uh, you, you have, uh, I don't know, somewhere between one and 20 minutes left, but uh, I guess that's your first notice. Let's come into our source control and see what it is we have done. Don't wanna make it, uh, maybe this. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so first of all, um, in our main function, uh, sorry, in our to do, the client range is not returning what we expect. What do we want to call it in May? So um, this is because get client language, we saw there is a function called get client language in Festival Buddy, but it's not called, and the thing it um, sets language to is nonsensical. But it is a, a case where you could be indexing by a number. It's converting these large numbers into small numbers, that doesn't matter, the computer doesn't care the size of the number, um, within reason. But we're not using this function. Uh, we're just using uh, that client lang function. So if it were me, uh, I would be curious, hey, where does globals happen? And where do general functions happen? General functions happens before globals. And I'd be very tempted to say, hey, uh, since general functions happens before globals, why is client laying detection here instead of in get client language? So I would actually hoist this out Um, hmm, I'm uh, having second thoughts. So, uh, when in doubt, let's uh, pull open a separate uh, buffer here to think about things. Client lang, I really just want that to be uh, language. And we'll do a local here. Local language equals that. And then I would return language. And then I would just call get client language. So client lang equals get client language. And then that isn't running at the file level. We still have a global file of a global variable called client lang, which is good because we were using that in several places. But the initialization of it is now tucked away in a function that can be called independently. So we can always call this somewhere else this, uh, if we ever needed to. And it's not making any global changes. It's just figuring out what this is and returning it. OK, so calling a function with no side effects, setting the result into client lang, cool. Uh, but that means get client language my general complaint with it is it is returning now and we do call it awesome all right so 
uh, changed direct table access to table string table access to get a string uh, call. And we can just go through it real fast. We see set text, or instead of setting this language, we're doing a get string, we're doing a get string, awesome. Barterwin, get string, get string, get string. We can see we're just uh, uh, doing get string changes. Great. Chat window, same thing. More get strings, more get strings. Get, 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 get. Um, we're seeing a client lang instead of settings language. Eventually we'll be able to track down any uses of client lang if we still want to kind of investigate what's going on there. But in the meantime, uh, setting language, client lang, great. All right, dancing, get string, get string, get string, get string. All right, get string, get string, get string, all of that. This was again a case where we could not use the get string function first. Uh, because we needed to know if it was nil, and second, because we needed to be able to write to the value. All right, general functions. We got rid of that get string uh, in favor of our own. We fix up the get client language function. Both good. Globals. We now have that function invocation, an invocation, and we're removing client lang from new uh, language files. How many against win? So many get strings. Get string, great. Min get string, okay, stage that. This is where, you know what? Let's go ahead and unstage that for a moment. Okay, um, this is where we do get stage, get stage, get string, more get strings. So close. But this is an important part of the process, is making sure that the changes you made were the correct change and the only changes that you made. Uh, you didn't uh, put some debug code, you didn't put some, uh, something in there that you didn't mean to. So it's really nice to go back and kind of review your work and make sure you're still happy with all of that. Okay, what's going on here? Get string, get string. Nope. That last one. Good string. Um, okay, here's that one of those ones where we had to use the client lang. Okay, get string all the rest of them. There, get string. Had to add an English uh, section to that. Okay. Here's where we did the uh, multi edits of ch changing uh, English to string into string to English. All right, same thing here and add a few comments to help explain why we were doing what we are doing. I'm gonna use text, same thing. Same thing here, Will Whitfoot. And our get string function. All that looks great, okay. So we have the clearing of the language in the save file. I'm gonna do that as a second separate commit since it's so much smaller and more isolated. And change the direct string table access to get string call. We're gonna go ahead and commit that and then come back in and remove settings.language. Bam, awesome. So we now have um, linked up client lang to all of those tables that were looking at the settings.language so that if you change languages, Festival Buddy will also change. So I can unload and reload. Awesome. And now we're back into English. And come on back into the code. Into our Oh, where was it? General functions, get client language. And again, we're just gonna say language equals French. Unload, reload, and we're back into French. Awesome. Now I see the list in this anniversary box and I'm wondering Okay, I think it's in order 
in that numerical table of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. And that's why it's all showing up in that order. Okay, that's fair. So we're in anniversary, we unload, we're still in anniversary. That's the third from the bottom. Okay. So unload, reload, we're still in anniversary. All right. Uh, what about a German? Which equals German. Okay. Unload, reload, we're still in anniversary. Okay. So uh, if we uh, go into fireworks and Brie, and let's move that quick slot helper over. What happens if we unload and reload? It doesn't save that quest, that's okay. At least it does not appear to. All right, fireworks and Brie, unload, reload. Okay, I think that's probably pretty reasonable. Okay, um, awesome, so, that's kind of how to take uh, translated localized strings to a next level, which is to say, let's make it a little bit more robust. Let's make sure that we can respect the client language choices um, even after the first time you load up. Uh, so you can bounce back and forth between client languages. And when you do, let's make sure that any uh, part of the user interface that hasn't been localized yet, it's not a problem. You have a fallback to English. Not ideal. We would love to have these translated into all languages immediately, um, but that is not the case. Now, it's also important to note that it would be possible to have something in your options that says what language do you want to see the user interface for. Maybe you're trying to learn German, so you're playing the German client, but you'd really like this, this plugin to just be in French. That is completely possible because, again, we are setting our language based off of criteria. And if one of the criteria was, has the user requested a different language, well, we could take that into account in the Git client language, uh, where we say, oh, did they ask for French or German? Okay, use that. Otherwise, what, what language is the client in? So that's, a, that's an interesting idea. I'm like, hey, maybe I want my user interfaces to be in Dutch uh, for, for the practice. You can, you can do that. Uh, you can allow the users to kind of specify their own things. All it takes is time and effort to code it up. Though there's a certain benefit to the default of plugins matching the client language. Okay. So I noticed that my saved anniversary and quest wasn't persisting. Um, and I think the answer was because um, we were not actually looking at the client language. And so now they are persisting, at least the anniversary is. So I can go ahead and get rid of that. Now I had an idea for a starts with function. I'll, I'll continue thinking about that as an idea. Uh, but that's not maybe a today thing. And then, let's see. Let's go ahead and unload and reload. Great, fireworks and brie. Actually, let's go ahead and accept fireworks and brie. Accept and complete. Accept and fail. Accept. So, a thing that was being seen by myself and by Little Redhead, possibly others, was that when you turned in the Fireworks and Brie quest, the UI here was not clearing. Now, unfortunately, we can't test live against the uh, quest giver, but we can see here that if you, you know, accept, complete, or fail a quest here, that that UI frame is going away, and. So one thing we can do, and this might be a future enhancement, is pay attention to the quest progress of launch the correct firework, 10 out of 10, or one of the other ones. And that would be a fine time to hide it. Because at that point, the only way you can, uh, oh, in game, your uh, little toolbar also hides. And the only way to get it back is to either complete the quest and come back or to fail the quest and come back. But either way, uh, you're not getting it back without re-accepting the quest. So I think that's a tempting idea is to pay attention to these texts and then hide the UI. It shouldn't be necessary, but I'll have to wait uh, to test it in situ again. Um, to test, 
does the fireworks frame hide when you turn in fireworks in Bree? Question mark. Okay, so the frame should not go away, it no longer does. Move announcement text down a bit to dodge quest advancement. I actually think this is a good idea. Uh, it'll be helpful to have another festival going. Um, and this was a nice idea also, um, was that if you get the fireworks and Brie quest, it doesn't matter whether or not you're an anniversary or not. The default is spring. But if you accept the quest fireworks and Brie, oh, it does work. Why wasn't it working before? I'll have to look into that. It does on my machine. Why didn't I see it working before? Question mark. Okay. Um, neat. Okay. What uh, festivals are upcoming here? I'm going to go ahead and go to the Lotro event calendar and the 2013 calendar is up on Lotro.com uh, localized in various languages and it's spelled out for the rest of 2023. Awesome job to the SSG team for kind of nailing down all those dates well ahead of time so we can plan on them. Um, but the Buried Treasure event starts on the 18th. For that, Galahad did a separate plugin called Rich, which I highly recommend. Um, it is a really nice, uh, simple window for keeping track of um, each of the, the things that are relevant. Apparently I have 201 treasure tokens. Great. Uh, I'm still missing one of the steeds. So, I uh, highly recommend Rich. I think it could be useful to kind of incorporate that into Festival Buddy at some point, but it's fine as a standalone plugin. And Buried Treasure is, is one, some, one of those things that just comes along once in a while. Um, okay. Hobnanigans is coming on June 1st. So, let me make a note or reminder to myself. Hobnanigans. 3, 6, uh, that's uh, like two days before we get a, a new roof work done. Uh, get French and German strings. Exclamation point. All right. Oops. Um, tree beard level caps going up. That's going to be exciting. And Midsummer Festival comes very soon. Okay, so I imagine beginning of June, I'm going to be putting more time into Midsummer Festival uh, updates for Festival Buddy, if appropriate, and then start doing some releases, because uh, not a lot of point in releasing during a festival, but I have some changes I would like people to be able to work with. And I'm interested in maybe some maps of Minas Tirith for the Midsummer Te Festival for navigating around. Not sure if that's a useful thing, but... Uh, I know I have a route through there that makes a lot of sense, I, and I hope other people do too. Okay. I think this is an excellent place to pause for the day. So, I'm not seeing any last minute questions in chat. Yeah, figure out where my notes have gone to. Okay. Yeah, I think that's everything we're going to cover today. This has been a nice, uh, quiet day of doing language changes. Thank you all for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins. I do hope to see you here next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.